So let me guess, you're console gamer, but you want to get into Minecraft Java. Now the problem is that consoles use controllers, and PCs use keyboards and mice. And Minecraft Java is on a PC, so you'd have to be using a keyboard and mouse. Well, if you just can't get used to using a keyboard and mouse, and you'd love to use a controller to play Minecraft Java, I have the solution. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to use a controller on Minecraft Java. It's pretty simple, so let's get started. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is we are going to be controlling Minecraft with a controller, and there are many ways you can do it. You could set up key binds and do that, but I found the best way is to use a mod. And we are going to be using a Forge mod, so you will need Minecraft Forge. I'll have the link in the description below. This is the link here. You go here, uh, choose the version you're going to be using, choose installer. You'll get this pop up here. There might be an ad here, but I have ad block. So then you just wait a couple seconds, and then you can skip. And it should start downloading. The other link I'll have in the description is the actual mod itself. Now this mod is made by Mr. Crayfish. They make pretty good mods. And the reason I'm going to be using this mod by Mr. Crayfish, which is controllable, is because it's got a lot of unique features which make it way easier to set up in Minecraft. And it supports the controller straight out of the box. You don't really have to set up anything as long as you have a pretty well-known controller. So just like the version you downloaded 1.18.1 for Forge, you'll want to download the same version for the mod. Now Mr. Crayfish has supported all the versions all the way back to 1.12.2. Sadly, if you wanted to try to do 1.8 PvP with a controller, tough luck, it's not supported. You will have to use 1.18 all the way to 1.12, but I'm going to assume that if you're going to be using controller, you will most likely be playing on a more modern version like 1.18, 1.17, one of these versions here. So just download the one we're going to be using, 1.18.1, then it should start downloading. So now that you've got both of the files downloaded, you want to launch the Forge one. And this should show you this Forge installer window. It's pretty simple to do. All you do is make sure install client is selected, not install server or extract, just install client. And this should already be set to wherever your Minecraft launcher is. So it should be all good here. Just click OK and it should start installing. Now make sure Minecraft is closed, and also make sure you've run the version, for example, 1.8.1, at least one time before installing. And it should say complete, successfully installed client profile, all of this. It doesn't matter as long as it says complete and successfully installed. Just click OK, it should close. And now we're not done yet. We need to actually put the mods in the mods folder. Now you might already know how to do this. We click Windows and R, that should open this. You don't actually have to do this. You could go to the file explorer. And in the search box, type in percent app data percent and just click OK, no matter where you are. And then this window should pop up. Now from here, click Minecraft and go down to the mods folder. Now if there is no mods folder, you can just create one. Just make sure it's all lowercase or you can start forge at least one time and then this folder should be created. And we can just put it into the mods folder. Then you just close everything. And now you can start Minecraft. If you've done everything correctly up to this point, you should have a Forge installer in your Minecraft launcher. So if it's not already selected, just click it and then go through the list and find Forge. It should be 1.18.1 or whatever version you're using. So now you can just click play and it might ask you saying that it's not a official version of Minecraft. It is modified, but Forge is very well known. A lot of modders use it. So click I understand the risks show me again and click play. So Minecraft should launch just like normal and now to verify that you actually have all the mods installed click on the mods and you should see controllable. Now what you need to do is you need to get a controller I'm not sure how you're gonna plug it in either if you're doing it through Bluetooth you're doing it through some kind of adapter if you're doing a wide connection that also works now you should be able to see the controller in real life you can see my hands you can see the controller I know it's a bit of a weird angle. I don't have a really good setup for recording this. But what we can do now, if you look on the screen, we can use the left analog stick to actually navigate around. Now, hoping that you're using an, either an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller, this should be right out of the box support. Now, if you do have some kind of other controller, you might have to do a little tinkering. But you can see we can actually move around. We, can, we can't use this stick to navigate, but we can also use the sound effects as well. We can use the D-pad to move around the menu. But first I want to show you the settings. So if we go to options and next to controls, there's a little controller icon. We click that 
and you can see that it does see our controller. But what we can do now that we've got our controller showing up, if yours doesn't show up, you might have to do some troubleshooting or if it doesn't come up in general, it might not work. But what you wanna do, go down to settings and here in settings, you can change things like rotation speed. Mostly these are settings for just the behavior of the mod. But besides that, you can go back and you can go to bindings and this will show you all of the buttons that are being used to change things so if you don't know any of the key binds you can look here and you can see them and you can go to layout and this is where it looks really good because you can actually see how your controller behaves in minecraft you can see that when i move this stick around that one moves i move this one that one moves just check to make sure every single button works the triggers the top trigger buttons i'm not sure what these ones are called there's this one that one this one, this one won't actually work. You should just check to make sure all the buttons are working. You can see these are all working. Everything is working here. If there's a problem, you can remap them by clicking them and then choosing which input you wanna use. But if everything's good here, click cancel, go back, and now you should be ready to play Minecraft. So I'm gonna show you a little demonstration of what it looks like to play the game. And we're gonna do it in survival mode, just some random world that I generate. And I'll show you why this mod is unlike a lot of the other ones and works way better. So you can see that if you do know how the controls work for controller, you can move around like your camera with this right analog stick and you can move around with the left one. You can jump by pressing A and then you can move around, you know, you can break the tree or break any block by pressing the right trigger and you hold it and you know, it'll break the tree. We can break, let's break multiple pieces of wood. And then we click Y to open the inventory. And what we can do, we can place it in here. And you can use the D-pad to move around the inventory if analog stick is a bit hard to use. But we'll drag it in here. We'll make two sets of oak planks. We put that back in our inventory. And then we can also drag this to get a crafting table. Now I accidentally made two crafting tables because, you know, I'm still not that used to these controls. But what we can do, place one down. Uh, we would have something to craft, but we can't. We click Y to open and close the inventory. Uh, wait, let's just make a couple more trees. Let's try to get some stone tools. And if you want to place down one block, you can click the X button. And that should place down, you know, one specific block in each slot. And then we can make sticks. And, you know, we can move around. We can break some stone. I'll just try killing an animal, see how easy it is. You can see that when we walk around, we can actually get tool tips, which tell us what to do. For example, you can see it says break. We press the right trigger to break things. Inventory is the Y button. And if you want to run, you can click the analog stick two times or like move it two times. And let's try to 1v1 this wolf because I think we're going to lose, but we'll see how hard it is. Oh, maybe, maybe. Okay, we did it. We did it. Maybe the other wolf is going to get angry at us too. We might want to try to run away and we are pretty low in health. If you want to crouch, you have to push down on the right analog stick. And now I don't really know most of the controls. I'm just kind of learning as I go. But like I said, if you want help, you can go to options and that should show you everything to figure out how to control with the controller. Now looking at settings, you can see a lot of different things. For example, we've got icons, which I'm pretty sure the icons just change what it looks like for the tool tips. For example, let's change it to a uh, Xbox One, we can see what that looks like. You can see in the bottom left, now it's colored. But if you were to be playing on a PlayStation, maybe it's a bit confusing if it was the Y button. We can go down to settings, change it to PlayStation 4. Now if we go back, we can see that the inventory is a triangle. Now I have no idea what the triangle would be because I don't have a PlayStation. But then the settings to invert the look, which I'm pretty sure that changes. If you're going up, you'd look down, you look down, you look up, it just inverts it. You got rotation speed, so you know, if you want to move around quicker, it even tells you some of the things. And here, show actions, you can set it to show all, minimal, or none. Let's set it to all, you can see what it looks like now. See, we can see jump, we can see sneak as that button, attack, break, you know, inventory. It doesn't tell you what to do when you're in the crafting menu. I'm not sure if we can actually enable that through the mod, and it doesn't really look like it. And you also have the ability to turn on the console hotbar, which will basically just raise it there's no real point of it it's just kind of supposed to look more like a console there's also cursor type if you don't like this one you can choose uh there's a dark one which i personally wouldn't choose because most of the menus are gray and 
this kind of blends in, especially like here, but I think there's also console. This is like the legacy one on like the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and there's also a different version of the light one. I'm pretty sure this is the original one that came with the mod, but there's also a dark one. And then just back to the light one. I think I'm actually going to set it to the console. That one looks pretty good. And you can see the mouse speed. That changes how quick we move around on the UI. For example, we turn it up. Now we can move a bit faster. Let's set it all the way to the end. Okay, now it's a bit hard to control, but you really do have a lot of flexibility when it comes to what you want to set it to. Now, if you want to know how to go in first person, we can click the up D-pad and that should turn our... Oh my! Oh no, this is bad. Skeleton. Anyway, the reason why we need to go in first person is because that's the end of the video. So if you did find this video helpful, make sure to give the video a big like, maybe even subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe to the channel, make sure to click the bell so you get notified when I make other tutorials just like this one. But I think that'll wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you can now play Minecraft with your controller. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.